and I'm back and today I'm reviewing the final two episodes of Dragons and Iron Realms season three. Honestly, my mood not the best right now, but um, yeah, let's let's just get into it. So let's get into, uh, as I like to call it, the most predictable episode in the history of predictable episodes. This is super boring, but I have to say it because it starts off the plot. They are chatting, blah blah blah, and Tom has this thing, sword, thingamabob, whatever it is, I don't know, but he wants to, like, make it into a sword, but obviously you need something very hot so you can, um, so you can shape it, uh, but that's why they go to the dragon, to the pig dragon, that's kind of cute, don't like the tail, though, and the dragon is, like, I don't know, it's not in a good shape, it seems very sad, very sick, so they're, like, what is happening, and they're just wondering, because this dragon usually, like, spews out magma all the time, but now, it's not doing that. So they're like, maybe something is like stuck and it can't spew out magma. So we should like, you know, that medical thing that lets you see through things. I, I don't really care enough. So they say that you need, you would need to bring that instrument uh, there so you can actually do it in the cave. But oh, there's no electricity in the cave. So what are we going to do? We have to bring it to the actual station. But what do you mean you don't have electricity? You literally have thunder. Like thunder has Thunder. Thunder is electricity. Like, I was really expecting that to be, like, a plot point of, yeah, we can just use thunder, we can bring the instrument here, and thunder is just gonna power it. But no, they completely gloss over that. I will call that a plot hole, if not proven otherwise. And now the predictable part of the episode starts. So, as we know, Eugene is, like, kind of on probation period for will he actually join uh, the Dragon Riders. And in this whole episode, they just absolutely ignore him. So it's very much obvious, like, he's trying to give his input, he's trying to, like, be kind of friendly, but they're just completely ignore him, so it's obvious that on the end of the episode, he's gonna do something heroic, he's gonna save everything, and then suddenly everybody's gonna be like, oh yeah, actually, we're sorry for doubting you, and that that's exactly what happens. And then there's a bunch of scenes of them trying to get the dragon up to the station, but I really don't care. Uh, and then they leave Eugene to babysit the dragons, which, again, they're just absolutely ignoring him. Why is Eugene's dragon so ugly? I will never, ever stop complaining about it. This dragon, I don't remember what it's called and I don't care, it is a monstrosity that shouldn't be allowed to walk anywhere near me. This is the type of dragon that is like an episodic dragon. It comes in one episode and thank god it never comes again. But this dragon is staying here. Because Eugene is staying, and I don't hate Eugene, I hate his dragon though. So when they bring this dragon to the station, you, you can't tell me that they just put it on a stroller. They just put it on this thing like it's not gonna break. Like, there's no way this thing can hold up that dragon. That dragon has to be at least a few hundred kilograms. So, like, there's no way that thing is so strong for that dragon. And then later, they, like, uh, take the dragon on that thing and, like, roll it all the way, like, up to the fissure. That is ridiculous. Th those little wheels can't do shit. Also, this guy is back, and this guy, in this episode, we find out that he actually hates his, like, real name, which is Leonard. So I will call him Leonard, because it's disrespectful, because he wants us to call him, uh, Bassa, or what? Oh my god, I just, I die of cringe every time I hear it. It's so, bleh. So yeah, I'm just gonna call him Leonard, because he hates that. So Leonard comes, and again, like, sees Eugene, which just, I... I don't like this dynamic because this guy is clearly insane and why is like why are they playing this for laughs all the time for this guy literally harassing people like oh it's so funny he's just throwing axes around like he throws his axe around people's faces and it's played for laughs like he wouldn't actually kill somebody he would he 100% would maybe he already did but you know what, through this all, through- honestly, this season hasn't been very good. I feel like the only episode I can really say was good was the third one, again, with Alex. Uh, and Alex is just the only character who has lived through all of this still being the funniest, most interesting, consistent character. She is definitely my favorite character out of the whole show. So they pull out this crystal from the dragon. I don't really know. It's not its throat. It's like some, I guess 
the part that makes the lava or something. I don't know, honestly, I'm not gonna question it. But then they realize that the dragon is suddenly very cold and because it usually lives, I guess, in the fire realm. So it needs to be warm. So they have to rush to like save it because it's gonna die. Okay, I do, I do like the dragon though. So I guess I'm not gonna make fun of that too much. And then Eugene and Leonard have this freaking heart-to-heart -heart conversation in which it's like, uh, Eugene is like, maybe you aren't searching for a lightning bird, you're searching for yourself, and bruh, it is... I, I just, I hate any scene this guy is in, and this guy is in so many scenes. Like, why is Leonard in, like, every, almost every episode? But something good actually does happen. Uh, this guy accidentally sees Thunder, and Eugene knocks him out and covers him in bushes just to cover up the guy. It's fine. Honestly, that was actually funny. It was funny because this guy's in pain. And then we have the heroic moment we've all been waiting for. So since the first moment they said that they needed to carry the dragon to the station, I was just like, well, uh, this ugly ass shit that uh, Eugene is riding can shoot webs, so why don't you use that? But nobody's nobody had that idea for some reason, I guess, except Eugene, but everybody ignored him. But maybe he could have just said, hey, my dragon can shoot webs, why don't we use that? But now, you know, the show must go on, the uh, predictability doesn't matter. And yeah, we have the nice heartfelt scene of, oh, we shouldn't have doubted you, you can join the club now, yoo-hoo! So then we go on to the finale. So would I say that the finale redeemed the season? No. Would I say that the finale was bad? It was okay. Yeah, I, I have some complaints about it, though. I just really feel like the third season was not as good as the second. Like, the first wasn't perfect. The second was way better, honestly. And then the third just absolutely fell flat on its face. I don't know what they did. Or actually, I know very well what they did. They babyfied it way too much, and it's just not enjoyable as it used to be. So we open up with Tom having nightmares about the Fall Reaper, you know, that whole battle. He's just kind of blaming himself for it, and even thinking maybe the dragon is dead. Obviously, it's not, because this episode is happening. So he wants to go find the dragon, and June also insists that she's gonna go with him. And then we actually have a fun plot in this episode. So we have uh, Tom's mom, again, I, I can't remember her name. Do they even really say her name? They always call her by her last name, Collarson, so... And the other lady, they're here to, like, investigate some sinkhole or something like that. And this guy shows up. Yay, Leonard, how you doing, buddy? So he's kind of complaining because they're on his property, which... Honestly, I can't believe, I mean, he does have a company, or did have a company before he accidentally burned it. What an idiot. Uh, but he's like, he wants to supervise what they're doing. And they just kind of gotta go along with it because they don't want a lawsuit, which, fair enough. And he's trying to, like, get information out of them, like, about the lightning bird. Like, oh, you guys know everything about it. And these two are just like, yeah, yeah, this guy's insane. Let's just finish our job as quick as possible and leave. Uh, but in the Crystal Realm, something bad's happening. Oh no. Uh, so from the last episode, you know, that big cliffhanger with the claw that was like sticking out of the ground. Oh my god, so crazy. And this dragon emerges. Actually, it's pretty. This dragon is actually very nice. It has, uh, it's completely white, so it looks very sleek. It's like, the proportions are not bad. The wings are giant and beautiful. The face is actually nice. I don't have complaints about this dragon, like, obviously they can make pretty dragons, I guess they just don't want to. But yeah, again, this dragon bad because it's trying to take over the crystal realm, oh no, because there's like, I guess lava coming from somewhere, I don't know, some hole, just lava is going out of it, so that's just lovely. And everybody's worried that, oh no, they're gonna turn the crystal realm into the fire realm and everybody's, every dragon's gonna die. So Tom's bright idea is to find the Fault Reaper, so it could, like, make holes in the ground so the lava would go away. Cool. Uh, and he just freaking strolls up to the dragon to just be like, knock, knock, wanna help us? And for... I, just, I don't get this part. So Tom just expects this dragon that they hurt, that they, like, chased away, to just accept him, and he does? This dragon just, like, eventually, it first chases them around a little bit, but then Tom has, like, a very inspiring speech, even though dragons can't understand 
English. This whole exchange felt absolutely emotionless. It was just ridiculous. There was no reason for the Fault Reaper to suddenly trust him. Because Tom has shown no reason for him to be trusted. He just kind of spoke a bunch of inspirational stuff that the dragon can't understand, put his arm up, and the dragon was like, okay, actually, I will trust you with my life from now on, sure. And I just truly don't know how to explain this. So somehow, somehow, they explained to the Fault Reaper that he needs to make holes where the lava is so the lava could go away. Like, how do you explain this to a dragon? How? I think this show just completely forgot that animals don't speak English. Yeah, I forgot to mention that the beautiful, sleek, white dragon actually commands these things. Oh my god, wow, how, how crazy. That's why they're evil. Ooh. I'm honestly very sick of villainizing these dragons. Just, this show is supposed to be about understanding dragons and that no animal is truly evil. They're, they're only misunderstood. And then, magically, this the Fault Reaper decides that it's gonna help everyone by chasing this dragon away. Again, I gotta appreciate this white dragon. Oh, it's so pretty. Like, it's so... I really like the face mold, like face shape. It's very good. I'm kind of sad we're probably never gonna see it again. Ooh, and then we have a plot thing! Oh my god! So there suddenly was a hole opened, and Tom comes in, and there's some kind of thing with the sigil on it. It's some kind of cylinder thing, I'm guessing maybe there's papers inside or something. But ooh, cool, cool cliffhanger, and there's another cliffhanger. So Leonard here falls into a hole. Uh, sadly, that didn't kill him, but let's continue. And he finds this, like, wow, frozen world. There's, like, some kind of people that you can look through. Wow, how convenient in a rock. Yay. So I guess this is like the ice realm or something. I don't know. I don't care. Honestly, the season has left a bad taste in my mouth. So yeah, that would be pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video and bye.